right to free speech. Has anyone got fun rock the hair on there? You know, our Taoiseach, he's not my Taoiseach, but he has been discussing in the last 24 hours about how we get rid of the constitution of this country. This is a new narrative now. This is the new narrative. Last week it was the flag and the anthem. This is the warming up. This is the warming up of the Irish people. They put out an idea that seems so bizarre and unthinkable that they could take our flag, take our anthem and take our constitution. They throw it out there, then the media get on board. I was listening to the Dennis O'Brien media discussing the New Ireland. We might even have to rename it. We might even have to give it another name because it will not resemble anything that we know or love. Afghanistan, that's what they're going to rename it. I don't know. But I have said many times recently that we have always, as a people, been shown to fight back. But the last time we fought back against invaders, it took us 800 years. Yes. 800 years. The next time, there will be no going back. Because the last time the invader was vaguely similar, they didn't want us to speak our language, they achieved that. They didn't want us to practice our religion. They managed not to stop that, but the new invaders are doing that very successfully. This time the culture clash will be so extreme and we will be so weak, there will be no coming back. So that's why Varadkar is talking about a new flag, a new anthem, a new constitution, a new Ireland. Shame. 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 No, we're never going to surrender, Jenna. Never. I was in Birmingham not so long ago. Birmingham is pretty much the same size as this country. It used to be an Irish city. Built by the Irish, like Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Washington. The Irish went and worked for everything they got all over the world. They are known for building, slaving, working hard, never expecting anything for free. Birmingham is no more than an hour from here. Birmingham is no longer Irish or British. And I went to the Irish quarters of Birmingham and I was the only woman who was not wearing a burqa. Shame. That is the Ireland that these officers are going to allow to happen. That is it, and there is no coming back from that. There is no coming back. They will not defend Ireland in her hour of need. They will defend companies like this who want to destroy our way of life as we know it. Our precious culture, insulting the men whose names are on that proclamation, who thought Ireland was worth dying for. I have been fighting this corrupt police force for more than 10 years of my life. I'm not saying these individual Gardaí are corrupt, I don't know, but I do know that the man who is their boss is corrupt to the core. He has no respect for that flag because he drives around in a Jeep belonging to the Queen of England. And he is a 
traitor. And it is the case that recently in the Phoenix Park, when he arrived back in his Jeep belonging to MI5, the PSNI, the security barricade did not recognize the Jeep. Why would it? And it was catapulted into the air. This is the insanity of the country that we live in. How could it be that any Irish government could put a senior member of MI5 into the head of our police force, given our history? This is treachery. So the man that they report to every single day is a traitor, and you cannot get very high in the Gardaí if you're going to stand up for this flag. These are the facts. I know this because it is my experience as an investigative journalist exposing corruption in Angarda Síochána. They took my job from me of 20 years. I had just had a murder reopened, which was described in Dáil Éireann as the biggest cover-up in the history of the state. When I showed many TDs and senators my work, it was described as the biggest cover-up in the history of the state. That's when they moved in on me, a multi-award winning journalist, chief reporter in my newspaper, not a mark on my record, a flawless record as a journalist, serving the public interest unlike some members we see around us. Martin Callanan ordered that I had to be taken out of my job. This is on the record of the Charlton Tribunal. It is on the record. David Taylor, the former head of the press office, said that INM management were called down to guard the headquarters and a conversation was had after I exposed the fact that Martin Callanan was abusing our motoring laws for his own personal gain. I was removed from my post of almost 20 years because the man who was then my editor, Stephen Ray, also had his penalty points wiped. The Gardaí were able to put pressure on INM management because there's no difference between the Gardaí and INM. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me. And you know that I sued. I took three legal actions and was successful. I want nothing more than the Gardaí of this country to serve the people of Ireland, to protect them against criminals and to uphold the words of this constitution. That's all I want. But when you expose crime and corruption in this country, you are treated like a criminal. I have never committed any offence except to tell the truth and defend the public interest, expose corruption in the Gardaí. Now they are here today and they want to speak to me, they won't tell me about what. This could have been sorted many weeks ago. They know that this company has been accused by the most powerful man in this world of serious illegality and fraud. Whether they like it or not, the most powerful man on this planet yesterday accused this company of serious illegality and fraud. But these guys, I suspect, are coming after me. He's shaking his, ha his head. 
with Google going to reinstate my channel so that I can continue to inform the Irish people about what is happening. That is all we want. We are, they have tried everything. They have tried everything since we have been here for the last month. They have sent down people who are deranged. They turned a blind eye when I was being pulled out in the street. I asked them to protect me and they refused. Their agent provocateurs pulled at our banners but we did not react. They sent their Z-less celebrities up and down hoping to get a reaction. Their Z-less celebrities went on the other corrupt company Twitter and accused us of all sorts of lies. All sorts of lies. They have tried everything to stop us from demanding our right to free speech. All around the world now, this company is in a state of disgrace. Shame. We have every right to be here. Every right to be here. And highlight the shame and disgrace that they find themselves in. Allegations and accusations of serious illegality coming from the Oval Office. This company interferes in democracy every day. That's what these people in here are doing. They are usurping the will of the people. That is what they stand accused of. They have funded Hillary Clinton, a woman who is wanted for serious crimes, the deletion of 33,000 emails from a private server. A woman who flies in and out of here whenever she's in trouble in America. We are on the side of truth. No matter how this pans out, we are on the right side of history. Yes. Yes. We live in the West. And that means we stand up for free speech. Yes. Because when we deny our when we are denied our democratic right to free speech, the exchange of free ideas, the decisions, how do we work out how to run our societies through speaking, not through violence. That's what they want. They want violence. They provoke, provoke and provoke with their Marxist communist armies, Antifa. We are nonviolent. We see speech. Speech as the means of sorting out our differences. When our speech is taken from us, we speak louder. We still have a right to free assembly. Not one member of management has come down here, not one, to speak to us. Because all they want is anarchy and tyranny, their private police force, to sort things out for them. They hoped and hoped and hoped they would get violence, but there isn't a violent bone in any of us or any of the horrible names they call us. All we love is our country and our faith and the words of that proclamation and our flag and our anthem. And all we want is to be able to live in a country that protects our national sovereignty as an Irish people. That's all we want. They've tried everything to destroy me. They know they can't. They know they can't. 
Because even if I am taken out of the picture, and goodness knows they have tried to do that, my voice will only get louder and louder. So I've asked this Garda to come up and talk to all of us, but he wants to talk to me. So I'm inviting him as our servant. He swore an oath of allegiance to the Irish people when he left Temple Moor. He's gone up through the ranks. We know that from the shirt that he wears. I'm asking him to talk to us here. All we want is a peaceful resolution to this my channel to be reinstated and we will leave immediately. Yes. It is not a lot to ask. I will leave. I will leave. I'm not sure about the other people here. But I stand here because as an Irish person I have a right to free assembly, to stand here and to speak and demand that an American corporatocracy like this has no right to come in to our country and break the law, break the, the, the my right to free speech. So I'm not sure why he's not willing to come and talk to us here, but we're inviting him to do that. Assuming that there is no resolution to uh, my channel being reinstated because if they were going to behave like adults and end this insanity, they would do so with dignity. I am assuming that this officer is not here to tell me that my channel is going to be reinstated. But I am not in any doubt that the CEO of this company is going to be going to prison soon. So if this officer is here to tell us that justice is to be done, the removal of hundreds of my videos informing the Irish people about what's happening to their country was so wrong, so unjust, no explanation, accusations flying but no evidence, convicted of a crime that I did not commit, no word of hatred has ever come out of my mouth, ever. So if he's not here to tell us that, he's obviously trying to tell us something else. I don't know what that is, but he's very reluctant to come up and talk to us as a group. He wants to single me out. Is that right, officer? He's trying to single me out. I think if he was trying to seek a resolution, he would come up and talk to all of us. This is a terrible drain on Garda resources when our country is in a serious crime epidemic. My only crime as a journalist, mostly, has been to expose corruption in the Garda. I do not want to live in a state where the Garda are corrupt. I know that there are many decent officers who went into the force to protect the people of Ireland. My work has led to the reopening of several murders, including the longest and youngest missing person. The only reason they reopened it was to take the pressure off. Because when my documentary on Mary Boyle was published in July 2016, and it went viral on YouTube, it had almost one million views there were marches on the streets of Donegal. How could this happen? That a police force 
who had listened to the words of a corrupt politician, Sean McAniff, and cover up a child's rape and murder. But that's what they did. So, they reopened it. And this is what they do every time. So then the press can't report on it anymore. And the public think, great. Who would you think would be the first person they would speak to when they reopened it? Me? No, of course not. The two guardy who went on the record to say that Sean McAniff interfered, rang Ballyshannon Garda station, ordered that the chief suspect, another member of Fianna Fáil, was not to be arrested. Those two guardy were silenced. That was the first thing that happened. But unfortunately, they had told me the truth on camera many, many times. But pressure was put on them. Then as I continued my investigation, I went to the home of the chief suspect, a man who told lies to the guardy, the uncle of the child, tries to get us to believe that a UFO came down and snatched her that day. I went to try and speak to him to see could he please help us find that child who deserves a Christian burial. What happened? Five Gardaí arrived to protect him and his wife from me one journalist. Two squad cars, five Gardaí, and another squad car followed. Three of them in total. This is in one of the most remote parts of Donegal, where if you are being burgled, if you're elderly on your own, you would not get a Garda for love nor money. But because I went to plead with that man to tell me where the child is buried, that's all. Five Garda arrived to protect those people who know where that child is buried. This has been the story of my life in this country, trying to do my job as a journalist. So many other things happened in Ballyshannon. Too terrible to report. So many things happened to me when I investigated the murder of Father Niall Malloy. Again, the Gardaí tried to stitch me up. They covered up, again with their cronies in Fianna Fáil, the judiciary. They covered up that priest's murder, a man who served him loyally, a good priest. And I know that he is smiling down on us now, saying, keep it up. He deserves justice too. And then even recently, when my work led to the charging of a man who has been accused of serious allegations of child sexual abuse. <laughs> Those allegations were sitting in Terenure Garda station for more than 20 years. There's somebody here Today, an alleged victim who has been waiting for justice for more than 30 years. These men went 
to the Gardaí and made allegations of sexual assault. And those allegations just sat in Terenure Garda station. Nothing was done. And when last year I started to hear their stories, I listened to their allegations. Ex-pupil after ex-pupil after ex-pupil coming to me with very serious allegations and they tell me they told the Gardaí and nothing was done. So I told their story because I believe that they had a right. They had a right to see the person who they allege sexually abused them brought before the courts. He is an innocent man. He is an innocent man because he is before the courts. But he should have been brought before the courts many, many, many decades ago. As a result of the fact that I listened to the stories of those alleged victims, the Gardaí once again have come down on me like a ton of bricks. My treatment at the hands of the detective who took on finally because of the pressure that was coming on them, that was the only reason. His treatment of me has been despicable. Not once did he say to me, fair play to you. Not once. I sat in the courtroom and he brushed by me. I walked out to try and talk to him, but he didn't want to know. And I suspect that those men, because of the delay in dealing with these alleged uh, uh, that these alleged victims, I suspect that these men, these alleged victims, will not get to see the alleged perpetrator face justice because of the delay. How many times have Angarda Shikona delayed? when they are dealing with serious allegations of child sexual abuse. Every single week, nearly, in the CCJ, in the criminal courts of justice, we see convicted paedophiles walking, walking out back onto the streets. Why? Because of a delay in the Gardaí dealing with them. There's one judge in particular, Martin Nolan, who has a particular habit of doing this. He just happens to be a former Garda. And they have a great little strategy. What happens is they get the evidence, they get the child sexual abuse images, they have the victims, and then they sit on it. They sit on it for years. And then they come before Justice Martin Nolan. And Justice Martin Nolan takes pity on the perpetrator because he's been waiting for so long to face justice. He's had it hanging over him. And I have done up a collage of all of the cases where Justice Martin Nolan said, 
he convicts them because there's no escaping the evidence. He convicts them, but he says, due to the delay in getting this case before the courts, this man is now going to not, is getting a suspended sentence. An Irish Times journalist, he's about to be released. A sick, sick child abuser, sick celebrated by the media, celebrated, given a character reference by a pillar of the GAA, don't allow Cusack, a character reference. He is about to be released after barely serving a sentence. He's destroyed the life of a child who he knew. This is the country that we live in. My only crime is that I have taken the side of these victims. There is no coming back from child sexual abuse. That is what I have learned in the course of my career dealing with victims. They can never get their lives back together. And the establishment know that. They know that. That's why they are used as time to do the dirty work. People could be physically abused within an inch of their lives. They will survive that. They never survive child sexual abuse. They are changed forever. And that is why it has been so important for me as a journalist to defend them and also to defend those Irish citizens who were murdered in this state and whose murders have been covered up by the garden. Now that man has walked off. I'm not sure what his plan is, but they've done everything. They've taken my job, my livelihood from me. They've tried at every single turn to take my reputation from me. I expose the involvement of Amberna Shikona in the murder of Veronica Deeran. And they will stop at nothing. It is a miracle that I am still above ground. So I don't know what stuff they're going to pull here today, but I hope people have recorded this. And